And we pray all of these prayers, Father, with your will and in the name of everyone. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Provenient Act. Jesus, with the dawn of each new day, through your dearest Mother Mary, I renew my acceptance of this gift. And I thank you with all my heart and soul. May I live every moment in your divine will. Jesus, I desire to enter into you, be one with you. And I take what I find in you. Jesus, I find in you my own life, the lives of everyone from Adam to the last one to be created. Which you have perfectly redone in your divinity. And I offer them to the Father with you for his glory and a perfect return of love. Amen. My Jesus, in your loving providence, you've allowed us to learn that your kingdom is now coming on earth. We can enter into this kingdom. This is which, what I wish to do with all my heart. I want your divine will to reign in me all day long as it did in paradise in Adam and Eve, as it did in your home in Nazareth, in Mary with Joseph. I want your divine will to reign in me as it did in Louisa, firstborn in the divine will in these times. I want you to animate all that I do, think my thoughts, speak my words, do my actions. I want the divine will to have complete freedom in my humanity so that at every moment of this day and night, your holy will may be done in me to give you all the love, adoration, praise, thanksgiving, honour, glory and reparation on behalf of the human race, especially on behalf of those who do not yet know they can enter into the kingdom of your divine will. Amen. Ever holy and indivisible Trinity, I adore you profoundly. I love you intensely. Thank you perpetually for all and in the hearts of all. Daily prayer to the Heavenly Queen for the month of May. Immaculate Queen, my Heavenly Mother, I come upon your maternal lap as your dear child to abandon myself in your arms and to entreat you with the most ardent sighs in this month consecrated to you, the greatest grace of all. May you dispose me to live in the kingdom of the divine will. Holy Mother, as the queen of this kingdom, dispose me, your child, to live in it, so that it may no longer be deserted, but filled with your children. I entrust myself to you, my sovereign queen, that you may guide my steps into the kingdom of the divine will. Held tightly by your maternal hand, guide my whole being to live the unending life of the divine will. May you be a mother to me and I shall offer to you, my mother, my own will, so that you may make it completely submissive to the divine will. And I'll be sure never to leave its kingdom. So I entreat you to illuminate me and make me understand what the will of God means. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Daily aspiration of the month. In the morning, at midday and in the evening, that is, three times a day, let us climb upon the lap of our Heavenly Mother and say, My Mother, I love you. Love me too. Increase in my soul the will of God and grant me your blessing also so that I may do all my actions under your eternal gaze.
Day 23, Jesus is, is circumcision, the adoration of the Magi and the presentation in the temple. My sweetest mother, here I am again upon your lap. I, your child, cannot be without my mother. The sweet enchantment of the heavenly infant Jesus in the manger enraptures me. First, you hold him tightly in your arms, and then you kneel before him. After this, you adore him and love him. What a joy it is to think that your happy destiny and the little King Jesus himself are the pure fruit and the sweet and precious pledges of that, of that fiat that established its kingdom within you. O oh, mother, give me your word that you will use your power to establish in me the kingdom of the divine will. My dearest child, how happy I am to have you close to me to teach you how the kingdom of the divine will can extend itself in all things. All crosses, sorrows and humiliations, when vested with the life of the divine fiat, act as the raw material in God's hands through which he nourishes this kingdom and extends it more and more in the soul. Therefore, listen closely to what your tender mother wishes to tell you. I continued to remain in the grotto of Bethlehem with Jesus and dear Saint Joseph. Oh, how happy we were. Through the presence of the divine infant Jesus and the divine will operating in us, the little grotto changed into a paradise. It is true that pains and tears were not lacking to us, but compared to the immense seas of joy, happiness and light that the div divine fiat engendered in each one of our acts, such pains and tears were like little drops plunged within these seas. Indeed, the sheer, sweet and loving presence of my dear son was one of the greatest joys. Now, dear child, the eighth day arrived after the birth of the heavenly infant Jesus into the light of this world and the divine fiat sounding the hour of sorrow called us to circumcise my charming little baby. It was a most painful cut that little Jesus had to endure, for it was the law of those times that all the firstborn should undergo this painful cut. And such a law may be called the law of sin. And yet my son was innocent and his law was the law of love. Indeed, he had come to earth to search out, not man who should have been reigning as king, but man who had degraded himself. And he did so in order to become man's brother and raise him to his innocent state. He wanted to lower himself to degraded man's level by submitting himself to the law of sin. My child, Saint Joseph and I felt a shiver of sorrow run through us. But fearless and without hesitation, we asked for the priest to come and have Jesus circumcised with a most painful cut. In his bitter sorrow, the baby Jesus cried and threw himself into my arms, asking for help. Saint Joseph and I blended our tears with his. We gathered the first blood Jesus shed for love of souls. We gave him the name Jesus, a powerful name, which was to make heaven, earth and even hell tremble. A name which was to be the balm, the defence and the support of every heart. 
Now, my child, this cut represented the image of the cruel cut man had inflicted upon his own soul by doing his own will. And my dear son allowed himself to receive this cut in order to heal that profound cut of the human will. He did so to heal with his blood the wounds of the many sins the poison of the human will had caused in creatures. Every act of the human will is a cut inflicted and a wound opened, and the heavenly infant Jesus, with his most painful cut, prepared the remedy for all such human wounds. Now, my child, listen to yet another surprise. A new star shone under the vault of heaven and with its light went about searching for adorers to lead them to recognize and adore the baby Jesus. Three individuals, each one distant from the other, were touched and enveloped by its supernatural light and followed the star, which led them to the grotto of Bethlehem and to the feet of the baby Jesus. How astonished these Magi kings were in recognizing in the divine infant, the King of heaven and earth, the one who had come to love and to save all. Indeed, as the Magi adored him, they became enraptured by the heavenly beauty of the newborn baby. And he made his divinity shine forth from his little humanity in such a way that the grotto turned into a paradise. They were unable to detach themselves from the feet of the divine infant not until he again withdrew the light of his divinity within his humanity. And I, carrying out my motherly office, spoke to them at length of the descent of the divine word, thereby fortifying them in faith, hope and love, symbolised by the gifts they offered to Jesus. Then, full of joy, they withdrew to their regions to be the first propagators of Jesus. My dear child, do not leave my side, but follow me in everything. Forty days were about to sound from the time of the birth of little King Jesus when the divine fiat called St. Joseph and I to the temple in order to fulfill the law of the presentation of my son. And so we went to the temple. It was the first time we went out in public together with my sweet baby. And then a current of sorrow opened in my heart I wanted to offer up Jesus through the priest as a victim for the salvation of all. So we entered the temple and first we adored the divine majesty. We then asked for the priest to come and placing him in his arms, I made the offering of the heavenly infant Jesus through the priest to the eternal father, offering him in sacrifice for the salvation of all. The priest was Simeon, and as I placed the infant Jesus in his arms, he recognized that he was the divine word, and he exulted with immense joy. After the offering, assuming the prophetic role, he prophesied all my sorrows. Oh, how the supreme fiat sorrowfully resounded in my maternal heart, revealing the bitter tragedy of all the sorrows of my little son. But that which pierced my heart the most 
were the words the holy prophet said to me. This dear child will be the rise and the fall of many in Israel and the target of contradictions. If the divine will had not sustained me, I would have died instantly of pure sorrow, but it gave me life and used this sorrow to form in me the kingdom of sorrows within the kingdom of the divine will. Therefore, in addition to the rightful claims of divine motherhood, which I possessed above all, I acquired the rightful claims of mother and queen of all sorrows. Ah, oh, yes, with my sorrows, I acquired the little coin that would pay the debts of my children and even of those who are ungrateful. Now, my child, in the light of the divine will, I already knew all the sorrows I was to endure, even more than those the holy prophet had told me. But in that ever so solemn act of the offering up of my own son, and in hearing it all being repeated to me, my heart was so pierced that it bled, and deep furrows opened up in my soul. Now listen closely to what your tender mother wishes to tell you. In the sufferings and sorrowful encounters that are not lacking to you, never lose heart. With heroic love, let the divine will assume its royal place in your sorrows, so that it may convert them into little coins of infinite value. By this means, you will pay the debts of your brothers and ransom them from the slavery of the human will, so that they may enter as free children into the kingdom of the divine fiat. Holy Mother, I place all my sorrows in your pierced heart. You know how much they afflict me. Help me, dear mother, by pouring the balm of your sorrows into my heart, so that I may share your own destiny. May I use my sorrows as little coins to acquire the kingdom of the divine will. Today, to honour me, come into my arms, so that I may pour out in you the first blood that the heavenly infant Jesus shed in order to heal the wounds caused by your human will. Also, recite three acts of love in order to mitigate the painful wound of my baby Jesus. My mother, pour out your sorrow into my soul and convert all my sorrows into the will of God. <laughs> 